got lunches you got to think about, and you've got dinners, and if you've got families, you're cooking a lot. So I get it. So you know, we tend to get into like that the kind of run of doing you know three to five recipes that we're really good at, and we're just used to it. And I would say that Jerry and I do the same thing. I mean, there's you know the the cream corn burrito that we that we did at the very beginning of the class and stuff was is one we do quite a bit. We probably do that at least once or twice a week, and it's easy to do and it's fast. So it's one of those like 20 minute meals that you can do. And then we do um, we we'll do like spaghettis and pomodoro spaghetti pomodoros, all those kind of things. So we tend to kind of get caught into those recipes too. So it's nice that when you you know you put out a couple new recipes and stuff and kind of adds it to your to your repertoire and get to, to try some different things. This is the one that it's usually a, a class favorite. So anything that's heroes and has like, you know, the fresh ingredients and tzatziki sauce and be able to make it where it's plant-based is always a good thing. So, so we welcome you for this. This will be a, a fun class. We'll wrap these up and um, this will actually be Jerry's and my dinner. I will be doing it without cucumbers. He will be doing it with cucumbers. I'm not a, I'm a, okay with cucumbers and water to drink, but I am not real good with just eating cucumbers. So, so, is everybody waving? The guys. All right. So welcome. If you're still joining, we appreciate it. So we'll kind of get started. So like I said, we're going to make heroes. And then the second recipe that you should be able to get a hold of is the um, Greek cucumber noodle salad. So like I said, lots of cucumbers tonight. Um, if you guys have any suggestions of things you want to see for the next class, just feel free to type it into the, the chat. and We'll be able to see it. So we're always open to recipes. But like I said, I'm always trying to bring things that are quick and fun but also just a little bit different. So that's what we're doing tonight. So let's see, what, anything else that we could do? Um, Jerry has an article out there. Do you want to talk about that, Jerry, real quick? Hi, everybody. Welcome. I hope everybody's well and staying safe. Um, yeah, I have, there's a couple on the chat button. You can hit chat and there's a couple documents out there. The recipe's there. So you can basically click the link and it'll copy it in a, in a, on a clipboard, and then you just go to your browser, and it opens it up, and then you can download it or print it or whatever you want to do with that. So that's one way. And have a document for called antioxidants, how to boost the immune system. Since we're in this pandemic, uh, boosting the immune system is very important, obviously, to keep any kind of disease away and keep your body healthy. So there's some really it's a good article about uh, you know, blueberries, the types of uh, antioxidants we need to fight free radicals. Oops, Kelly, I need a microphone. <laughs> I can't hear you, can you hear me? Um, so yeah, the, need the antioxidants. So just read that and any questions. We have our website, and our, Kit Kelly's website, and my website. There's a link, there's a lot of information out there. Kelly has a lot of recipes. I have recipes and a lot of information about plant-based nutrition. Of course, uh, if you don't know me, I'm a plant-based nutritionist and a certified instructor for Dr. McDougall's Start Solution Program. So I do have a private practice and I have uh, tried to educate clients and help them with their health objectives and issues, whether it be uh, weight loss, uh, chronic disease of some sort, diabetes, heart disease, autoimmune. So I do now remote sessions, obviously. And I do do a free, a free 30 minute consultation also for those who are interested. So um, with that, I'm going to go behind the camera and then wait to eat the food at the end. So enjoy. All right. So, okay. So if you've got the recipes, go ahead and follow along with me and keep me honest because sometimes I will get going really fast and then I'll realize I haven't, I forgot an ingredient. But we always talk about that even if you kind of forget an ingredient, you can always add it in towards the end and everything will always turn out. We always do that in all of our cooking classes. So we're going to start with the heroes because I want to get the jackfruit going. Um, really quick, and I want to be able to get that in the oven so it crisps up, which is really nice. You don't necessarily have to crisp it if you don't want to. So if you're making it really quick and a bunch of people are, um, you know, for families or something like that, and you, you just want to just be able to serve it, you could do that too. Um, but it is kind of nice when it gets a little caramelization on it. So the jackfruit, um, I'm going to show you what I buy. I buy, you can get it from the cans um, in the stores and stuff, but I actually buy this on Amazon. So it's it's Upton's with a U-P-T-O-N-S, natural original jackfruit. Um, it's not real expensive, but it's, you can order, like I said, on jackfruit, um, and, and you can order it on Amazon, and it comes, and you'll see at the back there, that's what all the jackfruit looks like. This is really good for when you're trying to make dishes and stuff, so it's not a fresh, the fresh jackfruit that you're eating, because um, if you do grab one of the jackfruits out of the store, because there's tons of them all over, it'll taste like, if you open it up, it'll taste like, kind of like cantaloupe, bubble gum, and a little bit of, um, 
I'm trying to think like another, like cantaloupe, what, how do you do? Those are the three it kind of tastes like. But here when you get it and it's in these actual packets, it actually just, it, it doesn't really taste like much. There's a little bit of uh, kind of a vinegar flavor with it, but that goes away whatever you put with it. So you could make, you know, like barbecue with it. Uh, we made some barbecue sandwiches over the 4th of July. You could do the, the, the jackfruit, the heroes that we're doing. So all kinds of things like that. But this is a very easy way to get this. And it actually, I just store it in my, in my uh, cabinets and stuff and, just, and then just open it up as I want. If you only use half of it, which is what I did tonight, then just take the other half and freeze it. And then unthought when you need it. So that's the really nice thing about this. And the best, I like this better than I do in the cans. It tends to be like less chewy and less, a um, little bit vinegary. So this is really good. It's the ingredients. So Jack, it's just jackfruit. The water. Yeah, so jackfruit and its ingredients are just jackfruit. So it's just the, it's just the moisture that's in there. Um, like I said, this is a really good one. So I actually looked on Amazon for all the different ones and this is probably my favorite. So I'll just put that there. All right, so we're gonna get things going here. So I'm gonna use an induction burner so I don't have to keep turning around. So I've got just regular vegetable broth. I always talk about in the classes, we do not saute with anything like oil. We only saute with three different things, which of course is vegetable broth or vegetable stock, water, and then I always usually do the sign for white wine. And I always talk about that I only do the white wine usually if it's something that's more Italian, so more like sauces like tomato sauces and gnocchi sauces and all that. So if you're sauteing with vegetable broth and you're gonna be doing a lot of different things and you've got a lot of stuff going on in the kitchen and maybe some couple things like laundry going or something like that, cut your vegetable broth with water and it'll actually hold a lot longer. So it'll be, it'll uh, not dissolve off really quick. Cause if you do things, remember when you used to do oil, one of the things that would happen all the time, of course, is it would, you know, you could walk away and your onions would still be fried and everything was great. Vegetable broth will burn off really quick and things will burn. So I'm going ahead and start that. So then I'm gonna start with the onions. So I just diced, diced up um, red onions. It doesn't matter if you wanna do um, white onions, yellow onions, whatever you have in the fridge is fine. You could even use um, the green scallions if you wanted to. So completely up to you and whatever you have. those frying up. All right, then we're gonna add the garlic here in just a second. While those are going and frying up for me, I'm gonna show you, so the french fries. Here's an easy way to do french fries. If you guys like french fries just like the rest of us do, um, Jerry and I probably go through a lot of french fries. What I do is I just take, you can either just take a, a baked potato like this, just a regular raw one, and then you can put it in the oven at 350 degrees and then just probably for about an hour and a half to two hours, and then they get really soft. And then your skin on it and stuff will of course get, it gets a little uh, paper thin. If you don't wanna do that, you can of course take aluminum foil, put parchment paper on the inside and then wrap them up like we used to do, like my mom used to do. But of course she put a big slab of Crisco in there too with it to keep the potato soft. And then you just bake them for a while and then just let them cool. So these are nice and cool. Um, and then keep them in the refrigerator. So you could do like say five or six of these, which is really nice. Put them in a plastic bag and keep in the refrigerator. And then when you want French fries, you're gonna do exactly what I do. So these are already baked. So all you're gonna do is just slice through it. Slice through it again. You wanna make sure they cool. Um, the reason why is when they're when they're not, when they're hot and stuff, they don't cut as well. And when they're cold and stuff, they last a lot well. They actually cut through a lot nicer. So you just kind of spread them out. Of course, if you don't want the skins, peel the skins off. But I always just do the skins and then turn them over. So I'm gonna use a little different knife. Slice them into nice little slices like that. And then I have one of these nice little things. They're kind of like a, they're like an air ventilator. So you can put these on all your baking sheets and they're really nice. When you put your French fries on there, it browns them on all sides. Sweet. So you can get these on Amazon too, all over the place. And you can see they have a little, kind of little prongs mm -hmm. on them and they wash up really nice. So then just take the French fries, separate them out. And if they split and they kind of come apart, it's okay. Because especially for the heroes, you want them a little bit thick. But this is great for those, you know, that quick French fry. So if you do something like, if you have them in the refrigerator, 
and then you pull them out and then you just slice them up like this, you can have french fries in probably about 20 minutes or so, especially if you put your oven like at 425, 450 and get it going. Come out crispy too. Then they come out, yeah, you can do them, you know, you could do, I'm doing these thick because it's going into the heroes, but if you wanted to do them like really, really thin, you could do them really thin too, and they're really nice and crispy and, and really good. So my potato's still just a little bit warm, so it, it tends to crumble up just a little bit more, but there's nothing better also than having those little pieces, especially if you're eating french fries, the little pieces of the potato and stuff that are all nice and nice and crispy. So I just throw them on here. Big fries. Separate them out. Onions are doing well. Stir the onions because I got the vegetable broth is already starting to kind of go away. <clears throat> All right, so there's the, the French fries. So I'm just gonna add, and you don't have to. You can add, um, I'm not gonna add the salt and stuff, but normally you would add salt, pepper. A little bit of pepper. And then because it's heroes, normally you wouldn't probably do this because of the heroes, just a little sprinkle of oregano. As you can tell, I have my favorite savory slice. I have my bags full of, of spices. Set that over there. Onions are going well. All right, now I'm going to stick these in the oven. It's going. All right, so we've got this going. So now we've got the onions that are cooked. So I'm going to add the garlic. We always talk about, you know, if, you, if you've got, especially if you're home and you want more fast dinners and stuff, buy the garlic that's already chopped up. You can get that at Costco. I think Sam's Club, I know Costco has a pretty big jug. It's usually about this big around, about that tall for like $6.99, and it's only in water. And you can keep it in your fridge, and it keeps a long time. So what's really nice about that is when you want some garlic, you're not sitting there and chopping it up. You're just pulling out a teaspoon or a tablespoon, whatever you need, and then right away, you're putting it into the dish and away you go. It smells really good. I love the smell of, when you get like all my cooking classes when I was doing them at Natural Grocers, everybody used to come in and be like, oh, it smells so good in here. And usually it was just onions and garlic. That was the first thing that was going, but it would go out throughout the store. And I think a lot of people like the smell of onions and garlic. All right. Okay, then you've got all the different spices. So you've got cloves, so ground cloves. You've got cinnamon, you've got cumin, you've got oregano, you've got chili powder. It's all in here, so I put it all into one, one little dish. And if you smell it, it smells really good. It smells almost like a, kind of like a cinnamon um, cumin type of smell, which is really good. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in. Tomato paste. So I'm just going to kind of measure it out. Just kind of guess. Two tablespoons. Mix all that in because you want to make sure you get all the spices and everything else in there. So that's kind of what it looks like so far. Nice, pretty color. Smells really, really good. The cinnamon and the cloves and things are really starting to come out. So one of those things, this is one of those recipes that when you make it, your whole house is gonna smell like cinnamon and cloves and everything else, it's almost like a Christmas smell, which is a really good smell. Okay, that's in there. Okay, and then if you're following along, so then we're gonna add the rest of the ingredients. So the rest of the ingredients we have is the jackfruit. So the jackfruit, you can tell was in the packet, was a little bit bigger pieces. So I just did a rough chop on it, and that's pretty much all I needed to do with that. So I'm gonna add that in. Get it all out because you don't want to don't want to waste any of it. All right, and then we've got the soy sauce and the maple syrup. So we got that in there. That's all mixed together. All 
You could do, you know, if you didn't want to do soy sauce, this one has, it's low sodium, but you know, feel free to use like tamari or any of those type of things. So whatever flavorings you want. And then if you didn't want to use the maple syrup, you'd probably want to add just a little bit of moisture, but you could do like that um, zero calorie monk fruit sweetener um, that's out there right now. There's all kinds of different sweeteners that you could use. Especially if you want to watch the calories and, and just want to stay away from the maple syrup. Let's mix this all up here. Okay, and then I have salt and pepper, so I'll add a little bit of pepper. And then we got the apple cider vinegar. So two, 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 that, two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. You will notice that apple cider vinegar was not something that I used, to, I'd say, at all um, before I was plant-based, but now I use it a lot. So I actually buy it in pretty big jugs because I'm always putting it into, into uh, like mayonnaises and all kinds of different things like that, that that we're always working with. Pretty much goes in anything. Okay, so there, I'll just mix it up a little bit more and then I'll show you what it looks like. Let it simmer for a few minutes and then before it actually cools, I'm gonna put it on the parchment paper because I wanna make sure that we get it all caramelized and things like that, so. There it is all prettied up. Smells delicious. That is going to be our meat. So let me just let that simmer for a few minutes. Turn down a little bit. If it tends to get a little dry or it tends to be sticky, um, just add just a little bit of vegetable broth is all you need to do. So just kind of watch it a little bit. All right, so tzatziki. So these are my ingredients for a little bit later. The tzatziki sauce. Pull everything over. I got potato everywhere. Okay, so if you're looking at the tzatziki sauce, it's under number eight. So we've got, so we've washed the cucumber. So I grated up a little bit of the cucumber already. Um, so all you need to do is just grab one of your, your cucumbers and just a regular grater. Or if you have it in a food processor, it's completely up to you. Because um, I've seen those, you know, those little tiny food processors and you have a little string, you can do that. Or you can just do a hand grater. So just grate it. Watch your knuckles, because if you ever watch the chop events, um, this is one of my favorite shows to watch. It's like the chefs that go against each other and they have all the crazy ingredients. A lot of times and stuff, when they start grating, you'll see they'll be like cut because they've actually done, they've taken skin off their knuckle or, or some other area. So just be careful. When you get down to the small pieces, just go onto the very side here. And then that way, when you're not going in the middle, it'll save your, it'll save your knuckles. I've also seen though that you can buy gloves. There's like metal gloves that when you're using a mandolin or you're using one of the graters and stuff that you can actually use and they wash up so that you don't do the scraping of your knuckles. It happens a lot. It happens to the best of us. Okay, make sure everything comes out. Looks pretty good. Just throw the little piece over. Or, you know, if you've got, if you love cucumbers, you can always eat that little piece. Okay, I'm gonna go lower. Just let it simmer. Smelled really, really good. And you'll notice in the jackfruit too, when um, if you've not ever used jackfruit, there's little seeds. So there's in each one of the each one of the pockets, you'll see, and it's hard to see on this one and stuff, but you'll notice that there's like little seeds. They look um, almost like an almond or something. Just chop it up. Actually, there's one right there. So see that little seed right there. So um, Jackfruit has, jackfruit has little seeds in them, little seed pockets. Just chop it up. It's, there's nothing wrong with it, and it just and it goes right into the mixture. Um, and they're actually the seeds and stuff, especially with it's, when you get it in the packets like this, are really soft, even though it looks like something you should pull out. Just chop it up. Okay, so you've got, the, you've got this here. So let me grab a little dish because you're going to want to keep. So if you get this, you can put this in a towel. Um, just grab one of your, like, your cotton towels or something like that. And then you can squeeze it out or just use your hands and you want to squeeze the juice out. Put the extra there. Usually I don't use a towel because a lot of times and stuff, if you use one of your white towels, it'll, it'll turn it green. It's really hard to get it back white, even with really good uh, Clorox or something like that. Okay, there's a little bit of the cucumber juice. You want to keep that. 
Easy peasy. Like I said, you can always grate it if you want to do that too. So we got that there. Okay, and then the seed that it says, so squeeze out the cucumber, we've got that. Now drain the cashews. So I've had cashews that have been soaking overnight, just regular um, raw cashews. And so we're going to add, so what we're going to do is we're going to place the lemon juice and the cucumber juice at the bottom of the blender. Okay, so I've got... I've got the apple cider vinegar that's in the, that's in the ingredients, um, and then the, um, the lemon juice. So I've got everything that's in here, so I'm just going to add that into the bottom. Okay, and then, so we're going to add, just make sure we're just following along, make sure I do everything. I, I, like I said, sometimes I will get my head of myself. Then we got the cucumber juice. Nice, pretty green color. Stir that a little bit. And then I'm going to get that in the oven. All right. And then we're going to, so we've got those. And then I'm going to add a portion of the cashews. So just, just right now, it's just a small amount. So just actually, if you're doing like a Vitamix, dump them in, especially with that few of them. I wouldn't worry about it. But feel free to use a little bit here and there if you want to. All right. And then we're going to blend. So we'll keep, um, so what we'll do is after it's blended stuff, then I'll season it with the garlic powder. Um, and everything else that's here, and a little bit of the mint. It says dried mint. Dried mint, I didn't have a chance to go to savory spice or anything, so um, I just had the mint, so just regular fresh mint. Um, of course, you're going to use a little bit less. I would use probably a couple leaves, or you could add a whole bunch more if you really, really like the mint. So it just depends on, on what you like. So let me go ahead, and I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add the mint in now, because that way it'll help it grind up a little bit. I'll just do a few of the leaves. Kind of do it a rough chop. All right. Um, and then we've got, I think I'll go ahead and just add the garlic. Since we're just writing everything out, let's just add the garlic powder. Let's get it done in one full shoot. All right. And then what I do with the over here. Thank you. As I say, what I do with the top. And scrape off. Don't want to waste anything. So as long as you soak your cashews, it'll make it nice and creamy. All right, then I got a Vitamix spatula. These are really nice. They come from Vitamix when you actually buy your Vitamix. Um, it's really nice versus the, some of the other spatulas that you use because it's really easy to get into all the grooves. So I didn't make a lot of it this time. You could actually, depending on how much you really like the tzatziki sauce, you could make like double, triple this because I'll pull this out here and I'll show you how much it makes. Um, but feel free to, you know, double, triple, whatever you need. But this is just enough for, for dinner tonight. Oh, yeah, I'm going to add, I'll add the cucumbers in here when I get to here. It smells really good. That's because it doesn't have the cucumbers in it. And I'll show you here in just a second. Mix that in. So I've got too much cucumber for the amount of tzatziki sauce that I made. 
So I'm just going to add the cucumber into here. And I'll show it here in just a second. If you want it a little bit thinner, add some soy milk, almond milk, something like that, and just kind of blend it up a little bit like that too. You can do that. So, we got green on the top. There's the tzatziki sauce. So that's all ready to go. So nice cucumber tzatziki sauce. So I'll set that, actually I'll put that in the fridge for just a few minutes. It says to chill, but it's actually really thick by the time you make it anyway. So it just, it just helps it with uh, keeping it cool. So this is kind of nice. If you get all these cucumbers like this, then, you know, put a little bit of vinegar on it, make some pickles, all those kind of things. So always keep that off to the side. All right, so I want to get the jackfruit ready. Parchment lined baking sheet. Smells really good. Okay. Spread it out. That's what it looks like on the baking sheet all ready to go. Looks like it. I'm going to put it in the oven. All right. Okay, so we'll make the heroes here in just a few minutes. We've got the potatoes going. Let me check the french fries. Nicely browning up, looking good. All right, the, the Greek cucumber noodle salad. So I'm not going to need this anymore. So we're going to spiralize. This is where it's kind of fun. So spiralizer, I bought one. You can get the little handheld ones. Um, I bought this one on Amazon. You can tell that it's, you know, it's been yellowed and things. Um, it's probably six, seven years old. Um, it has different blades that you can get on. I think it was like under $20. So Amazon has these all the time and they have the little stickies on the bottom, which is really nice. So they can stick on to, stick on to your uh, cabinets or your countertops, which is really nice. I'm just gonna pull that out of the way. I think I'll get a smaller, I think I'll do a plate. Let me grab a plate. It'll be a little easier when I'm spiralizing. So cucumbers, let me grab everything that we need to grab over. So let me get some things cleared off here so we have a little bit of room. All the ingredients. We always talk about in all the classes and stuff. Wouldn't it be nice? You would come home. And this would be setting on your countertops, all ready to go for whatever you had to make. That'd be nice. Okay, so cucumbers. So I'm just gonna cut off the ends, of course, because it has little stems and things like that. You can grab these kind of cucumbers. You can grab, these are easier to spiralize, but you can grab the English cucumbers if you want. Um, if you do the English cucumbers, try to look for the thicker ones, because um, they're a lot easier. And then because the length between, when you're spiralizing between this and this is a lot. All you're gonna do is cut it in half. So you're gonna also make, when you're making the spiralizing, you don't have noodles that are this long, unless you get kids who absolutely love it, um, but you've got the noodles and stuff that are at least this long, but then go ahead and chop them up however you wanna do it. So I'm actually going the opposite way, since I'm right-handed. So this one has a spiralized side of the lid. Spiralizer has a little hole here, so you're just going to put the big end there, and then you're going to pull the little the little prongs that are here, and then you're going to go like that. So it holds it just like that. And then you're going to stick it from the cabinet, stick it down. There's a little lock lever that's over here. You just kind of push it. It really doesn't do much on it. It just kind of holds it. 
but then just put your hand on it and you're gonna push this way with your hand and spin. And if it comes apart like that, just start over. For some reason, all right, I'm gonna cut off the end here. This usually goes really well. I think it's because the end is soft. You just pull this back out to unlock it. Pull this back out. You're going to have this little piece here. Feel free to go ahead and because that's the inner part of it, feel free to cut it up and put it into a salad if you want. If not, don't worry about it. You can actually put it into water and add some lemon to it. So these are your spiralized pieces. So some of them, as you can tell, are really, really long. So if you get something like this, of course, in a salad, just grab them, kind of pull them apart. Make sure your ends are not soft. Let's do a couple more. Good workout. Don't need to go to the gym when you do this. It gives you a good underarm workout. All right. Same thing, just kind of pull it back. You've got the middle piece. Throw that over the side. You'll get a little of them that you'll kind of pull out. All right, two cucumbers, a little bit of, little bit bigger in. In piece, boop, boop. Pull out your spirals. Look at all those pretty. Make sure the ends are good. And if it doesn't stick, just grab a little water, put it on the rubber, the rubber ends and stuff, and it'll stick on your counter. All right, everything out there. See, then when you're trying to get it out, then it does stick. <laughs> there go. Okay, so some of the pieces, just kind of grab them. You could use a knife if you want to. You can use your hands. You can have your kids separate them, husband separate them. Or you can leave them long because they're really fun, completely up to you. But usually when I'm, if I'm serving it in a class or doing something like that, I usually try to cut the pieces just to, just to make it easier to, to eat. So if you want to do even smaller pieces, not worry half about, about half to cut them at the end, then just cut your cucumber into smaller sections. So do your cucumbers like that big, and then you'll get a lot less of the bigger pieces. Okay, we'll kind of, just kind of play with it a little bit. Really good for summertime, cucumber salads like this, because everybody loves them. And then the nice thing about it too, is they always like, when you're doing like cucumbers and tomatoes and things like that, the next day when all the flavors and stuff, and the flavors melt back together and stuff, it's really good. It just makes it better and better every day. So those look pretty good. You do find a couple of uh, fun big pieces. That just adds to the fun. Like there's some, I just found like a curly Q. Remember the curly Q french fries that they used to do? I used to love those. Okay, perfect. Okay, we'll kind of keep those off to the side. Clean up a little bit here. It's cucumbers on the floor. All right, so we're actually gonna combine all the ingredients in a bowl. So we're going to whisk up the dressing. So we've got, we've got balsamic vinegar, so just your favorite balsamic vinegar. So you have that in, you've got two tablespoons. All right, you got the lemon juice. What did I do with the lemon juice? I think I might have added it in the balsamic, but if I didn't, let me show you. Sure. 
think I added already in here. Hold on. It's in there. Okay, so this is really cool. This is, um, you can get these at all the regular grocery stores and stuff, but you know, lemons and stuff, a lot of times they'll, they'll last, they'll last for a while and stuff, but if you wanna keep lemon juice all the time, the Santa Cruz Organics um, is a pure lemon juice, and this is really nice. So I've been drinking a lot of uh, lemon water with uh, cucumber in it, and this is really nice to have around and stuff. It's a really, it's a really nice way and stuff just to have pure lemon juice. And all it is is organic lemons, that's it, so. Check the fries. Another couple minutes. Okay, so there's the lemon juice in there. So we've got the dried oregano. Um, so I mixed the dried oregano and then the nutritional yeast all in here. So it's all together. If you're not familiar with nutritional yeast, it's actually, it's your replacement for like cheese flavors. So you can get it like Bragg's has it. It's all in all the different stores. I use it a lot for when you're making like ricotta sauces. You can just put the, the little flakes in there. If it says like, if you're making like ricotta and it says make a half a cup of nutritional yeast, add like a cup. And the reason why you wanna do that, it gives a really nice cheesy flavor. And so a lot of times when you'll make the ricotta and the, the um, lasagnas, people don't even know that you're using like a tofu mixture and stuff. They think that it's actual, uh, an actual ricotta. So um, nutritional yeast is also really good on popcorn. So when you do the popcorn in the microwave or you do it in the, on the stove and you don't have any oils and stuff, sprinkle some nutritional yeast and a little bit of salt and pepper on it and it's really good. So. So I'm gonna add that in, so the nutritional yeast and the oregano. Just add that in like that. Okay, I'm not gonna add any salt because it's like a nutritional yeast and the oregano in there, so don't really need it. And then we've got the garlic clove. Just grab a little spoon. And then, so we got all those ingredients in. So you're just gonna whisk it up, it's just a really easy dressing. You could taste it, you could add, you know, some add some more lemon juice, you could add some more balsamic. Um, you could actually add some of the reduced balsamic in it if you wanted to, so completely up to you, and whatever flavors that you're looking for. You could keep out the oregano if you're not an oregano fan. <clears throat> all right, so that's mixed up, so that's good. If you don't want it chunky like that, where it's got some of the chunks and stuff, then put it in a blender really quick or a food processor and then just whip it up. And that way, then you get that smoothness, which is really nice. All right, so we've already spiralized the cucumbers. I've already chopped up the rest of the vegetables. So we have the cucumbers that are done. Then we've got, so Castel Vatrano, and if I was, if I was, um, if I was Italian, I could say it better, but uh, these are great. I don't know if you guys have ever tried these olives. These are in the store. Um, they're usually like at the top, like top shelves in the specialty. Um, these olives are really good. They're, I do not like green olives. I like black olives, and I didn't think I would like these, but these are really good. They're probably, they're not as tart as a green olive or vinegary, but they're just a little bit more vinegary and stuff than a black, a black olive. So these are really good to have around, and they're really pretty. So I've already put those up, so I just sliced them in the third. So I'm going to, I'm going to add it into this big bowl here, and I'm going to add it into a prettier bowl. So let's get the cucumbers in there. Okay, then you've got your, your olives. Like I said, these are really nice, like a, like a mixture between a black olive and a green olive, but, but definitely um, not, as, not as acidy and vinegary as stuff as a green olive, which I'm not a fan of. Okay, and then we got the tomatoes. So regular cherry tomatoes or something right out of your garden. So I just chopped those up. And, there. and already you can see just even without anything on it, how pretty it is. Great summer salad. Okay, and then you've got the red onion. So two thirds cup, completely up to you. I didn't use two thirds cup because the red onions and stuff right now are really, they're really pungent. And they're really like, they almost like burn your eyes and stuff when you're, when you're cutting them up. So I went down a little bit less because I figured with the flavor and stuff, I didn't want to overpower it with red onion because it, red onion can quickly overpower a salad. So put as little or as much as you like. So this is probably about a quarter cup is what I put in there. Check. Yeah, better check my fries, thank you. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I'll go, I'm gonna go a couple more minutes. Remind me again. 
Yep. Okay, and then avocados. So just regular avocados, just chopped up, ready to go. So I just put, because it's just Jerry and I, I put one avocado, but depending on if you've got, you know, a family of two or three, four, um, put as much avocado as you want, you can put up to two. I figured that the, because it was a smaller amount of salad that I didn't want to have it overpowered just with avocado. So I only put one and then two cups of spinach. So feel free, it says chopped, feel free. If you don't want to chop it, you know, leave it whole. You could get the mixture of the baby kale and the baby spinach together. You could do that, whatever you want to do, arugula any flavor that you want, but I just chopped it up so it's kind of like the mouth feel, so it's all kind of the same. All right, get this out of the way. So there is, I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit. And overboard. So that's what it looks like without even the dressing on it right now. So already pretty and, and smells good and fresh and one of those really, really nice salads. Okay, so dressing, mix it up a little bit more. Get rid of that. Okay, so the dressing, I'm just gonna drizzle it on right this second. You don't need a lot because you don't wanna overpower the, you know, you got that freshness of the cucumber and your tomatoes and then you've got the, the real creaminess of the avocado. So you don't wanna have to you don't want to mess it up too much. Just add a little bit. Okay, let's just do that. And then since I'm at home, but using classes, of course, I have the gloves. Then what I do is I just get my hands in there and mix it up. And the reason why I do this and get in and you kind of massage the dressing in, you can also check your cucumber links if you've got some that are a little bit too long. And you can kind of grab them as you're doing that. But also what it does is you can add less dressing to your salads. So in an, what it does too is it also mixes in the dressing and it catches on to the lettuce because you're massaging it into all the ingredients. So since there was not anything that makes that dressing really thick, that wasn't like flax seeds or maple syrup or anything like that in it, you're gonna have, just, just like when you go to a restaurant and you order a salad with balsamic, everything pools to the bottom. When you go in and you massage the dressing in like this and just kind of make sure it gets into the lettuces and everything, then it actually requires less dressing but then, I got all this. Then, truthfully, there's none on the bottom. So you don't see all the pool of dressing that's all on the bottom either. So, let's see a big piece of avocado. Let me get that out. Okay. So that is ready. Let me wash my hands real quick and then I'm going to put it in the free bowl. And I'm going to check the fridge fry. I have a feeling that the fries are going to be ready. So these are, so I didn't want to make them like really, really crispy. So, but you can brown them as much as you want. Um, but these are like right in the middle because when you're eating through the hero, you don't want to have like something that you have to, to tug on a little bit. So these are right before they get really, really crispy. So there they are, but you can tell like the edges are nice and brown on that, but they're also thicker fries. So you're gonna get that little bit of chewiness and kind of crispiness on the outside, but then the really nice softness on the inside. So those are how you make fries really quick. What I, what I highly advise, no. um, what I highly advise is on, you know, an afternoon or something like that or a morning, put a bunch of potatoes in. You know, if you've got, say, you know, your potatoes are getting ready to, uh, you know, they're getting a little older or something like that, just wrap either, just put them in the oven, just right, you know, wash them down, put them in with just skins and just put them right on the rack and then cook them at 350 for probably about an hour and a half, two hours, and then let them cool off and put them in the fridge or wrap them up into um, aluminum size, you know, aluminum, aluminum sheets and then put the parchment paper in the middle so you don't get all the aluminum in it and then wrap it up and put it in the oven. So there's a lot of times and stuff that I'll do it two or three times in a week. And Jerry goes through tons of French fries. So he'll eat them for you know, like for lunch every single day. He'll have like a mock tuna salad sandwich with you know French fries, or I've seen him do all kinds of just strange mixtures, but it always seems to be French fries. So just put them in the fridge and keep them on the side, and you've got you've got uh, dinner, lunch, everything ready within like a few short minutes. Like last last night we had we did instead of bacon, lettuce, and tomato, of course. You could do, instead of bacon, you could use tofu and you could bake that up. I have a recipe for that. But if you don't want to do that and you want to do it simple, do avocado, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches. 
So you can just do a little bit of mustard on it and toast the bread. And then you have the avocado and everything else, which is real creamy. And then we had French fries next to it. So that was a, that was probably like 20, 25 minute uh, meal, ready to go. We were sitting down eating and completely full, which was really nice. So let me taste. So we always ask the question of what do you taste when you've got a salad like this and you put the dressing on it? What you wanna do is you wanna taste the lettuce that you've got in there. And that'll give you an idea whether you've got enough dressing or not enough dressing. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Doesn't need much because the balsamic is, is something that can overpower your, your, um, your meal. So you don't wanna make for your lettuce, your salad. Up. And this is one too. So you've got the, you know, you could add like roasted red peppers that, you know, you can get from the store. You could add, you know, any kind of things. You could even spiralize up like zucchini. You could spiralize up the yellow squash. I mean, anything and everything that you want to put in here, make it your salad, make it your own. You could do, um, you know, make it more Greek. You could make it, I mean, whatever you want to do. So there is the salad. Let me put it into a pretty bowl. You could hold off some of the avocado if you wanted to and then put the chunks on the top. You could put bigger slices of tomatoes up there. Wash my hands again. So let me do. There is Greek cucumber noodle salad. Beautiful. Doesn't that look good? Okay. Put that to the side. Let me check the jackfruit. So you can caramelize the jackfruit as much as you want or as little as you want. So depending on what kind of texture you're looking for. So if you'd like to have it where it's kind of more, it's like a little bit kind of caramelized on the side, but more like chewy, but soft, um, don't caramelize it as much. But then if you want it like really crispy and where you almost kind of tug at it and stuff, then caramelize it as much as you want. So this is actually more the soft, but it's all ready to go and it's, you smell it, it's just, it's got like, you can smell like the soy sauce, the low sodium soy sauce, it's got a little bit of the maple syrup, it's got the cumin and the cinnamon and all that, ready to go. Okay, let me unplug this and then I'm gonna put this on top of that and then we're gonna make them. Make sure I grab all the ingredients. French fries. This is one of those meals too that you know if you've got family, would be really fun too. Is you could actually just put everything out like a buffet, and then you know put the put your pita pockets and, and all those kind of things all in there, and have them and have everybody make them. So let me just make. I'm gonna make three of them. Just take a second, I'm gonna warm up the pitas. So the pitas that we used, <clears throat> you can get these at most of the grocery stores. Um, always read the ingredients on the back because a lot of times the stuff you'll see in a lot of the pita pockets have um, oil in them. So this is a really good one, it's whole wheat and they actually last for quite a while. So you could open them, so if you don't use them all, you could open them up the next day and use like mock tuna salad and stuff them with, you know, lettuce, tomato and the mock tuna salad, all kinds of things. So use them up, they're really good. Okay, so we've got tzatziki, let me grab that out because I don't want to forget that. And if you have a lot of cucumber juice, put it into the, the tzatziki sauce because it'll turn it kind of a nice light green, which is really pretty. Okay. All right, so let's let's get everything making. 
nice and warm. Okay, so as they were saying, so if you're following along, so place the, the warm pitas on a work surface, fluffier side down. So you've got the, the side here, which is more smooth, and then the fluffier side, this is what they consider the fluffier side. So put that down like that, okay? And then you're gonna use, um, so fill with lettuce. So we've got some shredded lettuce. You could use butter lettuce. I use the red leaf because the red leaf just adds color. So I'm always looking for color. Sure. Stuff them as much as you want, but remember they have to roll up a little bit. So you could always have side ingredients. Okay, so we've got the lettuce and then we've got the cucumbers, a little bit more cucumbers. I just did really, really thin slices. So just kind of add those in. You'll see they're just like little, little thin slices of it, which is really nice. Just kind of add those in as much as you want. Or if you're not a cucumber fan, that's me, no cucumbers. So those will be coming out when I get ready to eat. Okay, then you've got the tomato. So just regular, I use cherry tomatoes. I did those in, in quarters, so just add those in. Make sure you kind of get things towards the top because when you roll it up, you want to have the, you want to see the, the colors and things when you're rolling it up and then add some to the bottom. Kind of, it's almost like a, it's almost like a vegetable pizza. All right, then you got a little bit of slivers of red onion or don't, it doesn't matter if you want to put scallions or, or green onions or anything like that. So just add a few, a few of them, just nice little slivers of them. Good way to use the rest of your red onion that you were using earlier. So usually I put, I would say to start out, especially with red onion, two or three slices, and then you could always put some on the side and leave it on the side if somebody wants some more. Okay, and then we've got the baked jackfruit. So let me get a bigger spoon. So this recipe makes six if you, depending on how much jackfruit and what the size of your um, pita pockets are, because some of them are smaller, you could probably get close to eight out of this. Or you could do two or three and have leftovers and use it for other things. Okay, so that's, that's that. Grab. So then, and you don't have to do this. If you're at home, don't worry about it. These little, there's like little sandwich papers or white paper, butcher block paper. Um, so let me just grab, I'm gonna grab, I need some space. Otherwise I'm gonna get the paper weight, or weight wet, which is not the thing. And then some string. So you could get just regular, if I had, if I would have had some twine, I would have used that, you know, that kind of that, that real raffia type of twine, which I really like, but I didn't have that. So if you've got sheets like this, just kind of fold them in half. You can buy, you could use parchment paper would be another one. So if you just want to do it quick down and dirty. And I almost forgot the one ingredient you don't want to forget. French fries. Ooh. <laughs> so put like two or three French fries. And the cool thing about it is if you have extras, which we are going to have extras, that just goes with dinner. And you could always put those at the very bottom if you wanted to, and then layer everything else on top. Completely up to you. Make sure that one's moved to the top. Okay, so we've got the half sheet. I'll grab the fries out of the way. Okay, so you're just rolling up your pita pocket. That's why I say if you don't, if you do it too, if you do it too thick, but like right there, look at that. Not even wrapped up yet. So you could actually just take and if you wanted to, if you're at home and didn't want to do all the paper, just you can put a toothpick in there right there to hold it for dinner, and then it's all ready to go. But if you've got the paper, which is kind of fun, you just kind of you wrap it. So for all you people that have had kids, 
Grab it like a diaper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, real quick. I'm gonna grab the let me grab the twine. Oops. And this is when you're doing like a, if you're doing a big party. I know not right now during COVID, but even for, you know, family or something like that, this is the fun part. So sometimes, let me just get this in, but go back in. Grab this. If you had somebody that had a finger to hold it, that helps too. Like when you're doing the Christmas presents, you could tie, if you've got the raffia type of uh, twine, you could actually tie it to make it where it's just in a bow. So there's one of them. Let me just wrap up the other three real quick so you can see what they all look like. Just take a second here. First one's always the hardest. The little end goes up, big ends go up. Put it up against that. Cut your twine first, that makes sense. One, two. <clears throat> and I actually just pull that out just a little bit like that. One more. So but I, like wrapping presents. So I get three, right? You get one. <laughs> Two. Chef always gets the most, right? I think everybody would agree with that. Chef could always get the most. No, you get two. Oops, I lost an onion. Put that in there. Twine. So just think down the road, if you guys, you know, do, you know, maybe 2021 would be dinner parties. You could make all these up and have them on a plate. I guarantee you, nobody will ever complain. So then after you've got, this one goes, so after you've got all three of them up there like this, then you've got your tzatziki sauce. You'll notice that sometimes it'll get a bit, a little, a little bit of moisture. So just stir it up Then you dollop on. The tzatziki sauce. Like that. And then when you have a little bit of extra cucumber. Like that. And there you go, heroes for dinner. Isn't that pretty? Beautiful. Got that? And then you got the cucumber salad. So bon appetit, guys. Any questions? Chat button. Oh. No questions. <clears throat> well, this is a big hit at natural grocery one time. Oh yeah, we did. No, we actually, yeah, we did this at Natural Grocers. I think, I think it was like a sixty-person class, so it was it was a lot, but super easy to make, super easy to get ready. You could soak the jackfruit ahead of time, keep it in the fridge, you know, do it the next day, all of those type of things. So I hope you guys enjoy. I know we're right at six thirty-two, so we're doing good. So guys, enjoy. Thank you. Here's Jerry. Enjoy. I get two. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bon appetit. We're going to eat uh, heroes and extra french fries and cucumber noodle salad. Or at least Jerry's going to eat the cucumber noodle salad. So enjoy, guys. We'll Thanks. see you next time, two weeks. Be safe. Okay. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> Love you. Where do you buy pita pockets again? I got them at King Supers. King Supers. So pita pockets. Oops. King Supers for your uh, 
Peter Pockets or anywhere, pretty much any store. What was the name of that? So to, to Foyan. To Foyan. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks again. Bye guys. Bye.